Welcome everyone, thanks for joining us. So I'm gonna give you a brief run through of the Master of Genome Analytics. And as Michaela said, uh, we'll then be around to answer any questions uh, you have. We've got our email address up here. So if you do think of any questions after the webinar is finished, then please feel free to email us. Uh, Hendrik is just gonna put it in the chat so you can easily copy it out. And also a link to our website where some of the information such as the course structure and some of the other people contributing to it, you can find that information as well. So who will you be working with? As Michaela said, I'm the course director. My background is in neuromuscular disease. I'm interested in identifying the genetic basis of those diseases and in identifying treatments. Hendrika is the course coordinator. She has a background in cancer genetics, but is now focusing on education. And we'll be running this course, uh, but we'll have contributions from a wide range of colleagues. And this is a course taught by both the Faculty of Science, where we'll be introducing fundamental concepts in genetics and genomics and giving you that background and underlying theory, and colleagues from the Faculty of Medicine, who will be focusing on its application in healthcare settings and preparing you for this job as a genome analyst. So why did we set it up? Genome sequencing is revolutionizing the future of healthcare. More and more, we're seeing genetics and genomics be applied in different healthcare settings. And yet the skills needed to analyze this data are not common. So just as a bit of a background, uh, this data from the College of Pathologists a few years ago, we were looking at just over half a million genetic or genomic tests in Australia in 2016, 2017. And this was already an increase of 73% over the previous five years. And this is just going to keep increasing. The Global Alliance for Genomics and Health has estimated that over 60 million patients worldwide will have their whole genome sequenced by 2025. More locally in Australia, the Federal Health Minister recently stated that genomic sequencing should become the standard of care within the next decade. And that's been backed up by a $500 million future fund to um, promote research into how genomics can be integrated into healthcare in Australia. Some of the initial outcomes of that include McKenzie's mission, which offers genetic testing to couples planning a pregnancy so they can find out if they're carriers of any genetic disorders. And there's other initiatives that are still uh, upcoming. And this isn't just unique to Australia. The similar efforts happening in the UK, they've already sequenced over 100,000 people presenting at hospitals to determine the genetic contributions to their disease. China is sequencing 600,000 people in a similar pilot project, but around the world, genomics is set to become a regular feature of healthcare. The genomics industry is already quite large at over $3 billion, but is predicted to triple to over 10 billion by 2023. And that's a clinical genomics, and there's also agricultural genomics, consumer genomics, and biopharmaceutical applications as well. And so the challenge is with this dramatic increase in the use of genomics, who's going to analyze all the new data? And that's gonna be done by genome analysts. And that's why we've introduced this Master of Genome Analytics to provide you with the background in fundamental concepts in genetics and genomics and bioinformatics, and then the application of that in different medical and healthcare settings. So we'll be looking at microbiome and infectious disease. You could be looking at the next strain of COVID working out distribution and epidemiology. You could be working out which strain of flu we need to create vaccines for based on genomic sequencing of current strains. Could be helping somebody achieve a genetic diagnosis for a condition in their family or profiling cancer to inform the best treatment. So the master of genome analytics we teach it out at the Clayton campus. Um, it is delivered in a blended mode. So there'll be some face-to-face -face components on campus. There'll be some online material to work through in your own time um, and other practical classes and workshops, again, blended, sometimes online where we need to be face-to-face. -face. It's a two year masters, uh, or you can take it part-time taking four years, but I'll come back to that depending on your undergraduate or prior experience, you may be eligible to do a one and a half year version instead of two years. And that will dictate which entry is suitable for you, whether you enter in February or July. So why choose this masters? It is the only course of its kind in Australia. It's really focused on training you to become a genome analyst 
and meet that growing demand for experts with the ability to analyze genomic sequence data. So you'd be part of a unique cohort able to do this and with background and experience in applying it in a healthcare setting through the exercises that we've provided you. So I mentioned there was two different entries. The first entry is for students with a background in biology, but not necessarily in genetics or molecular biology. And those students would enter into the two year version of the masters. And in that first semester, you would get an introduction to genomics and genetics. You need a 60% credit average to enter into that program. If you've already got an undergraduate degree, which has covered some of these topics, such as a major in genetics or biomedical sciences, then you could enter at the next intake, which is in February. And the first intake for this will be in 2022 February or in July, 2021. Uh, and again, you need a 60% credit average from your undergraduate degree to qualify for that entry. Uh, if you have any questions about whether your prior experience would qualify you for entry one or two, then you can always contact us or Michaela and the team and the faculty. So where will it take you? You might have seen a number of different adverts for jobs in this area. And we've listed here some of the different titles that you may have seen. So there's a lot of different titles for this career, but it focuses around genome analysis or variant creation. And that's really the name for the more clinical diagnostic application of this uh, information and your skills, where you would be looking at sequencing data from people trying to work out which variant in their genome contributed to the disease. There's applications in research where you might be more commonly called a bioinformatics analyst or a research officer uh, and a wide range of other careers that could use the same skills and technologies. People who work in this field work in diagnostic laboratories, which can be attached to hospitals or they can be private companies, uh, also in biotechnology, in pharmaceutical companies and in medical research, uh, widely in hospitals, and of course in universities in a research setting as well. What does the course look like? Hopefully you can see all these details, but if you can't quite see them, it is available on the course website as well. So at the top, we have the foundation studies. This is for the students coming in with a broad biology background, but not necessarily that experience in genetics. And here we have units in human genetics, medical and forensic genetics, biotechnology, and the dynamic cell as a cell biology unit. And this will give you the necessary background you need as we move on to the more advanced concepts in the remaining three parts. If you've already got an undergraduate degree in biomedical sciences or genetics, or something similar, then you can enter straight away into the February intake. And so in that intake, or after the foundation studies, you would side by side study the core studies in genomics, which explores some of the concepts and theory behind this uh, approach, alongside the specialist studies, which is the application. So we have a unit called genomics and its applications, which introduces you to the key techniques one on genome function. This will talk about all the different elements in a genome and what their role is with a view to you being able to understand the consequences of those becoming mutated. Alongside that, there's a unit in genome curation. This is fundamentally the basic skills required for the job of genome analysis or curation. It'll be led through example-based learning, running through applications in the healthcare system, looking at the regulatory requirements, the reporting requirements to give these outcomes back to the families and the software used in those settings. In the next semester, we have a unit on bioinformatics. This will give you an introduction to the theory behind the analysis and some basic programming skills. However, no prior experience in programming or computational biology is needed to do this. We don't assume any prior knowledge. We also have a unit focusing on the sequencing technologies. There's been a great many advances in how we can sequence genomes in the recent years. And this will take you through the latest technologies. And again, with a view to understanding how that affects the outcome and interpretation of data obtained in these settings. We then have a unit of case studies in genomics. And this is where you take the information you learned in the previous semester and start applying it to more and more different case studies, different scenarios in which this technology is applied. So again, all with a healthcare focus, but building on the skills you've learned. 
We're really simulating the job environment to prepare you for it when you graduate. In the final semester, there's three different pathways you can take. If you're interested more in the research and would like a pathway to a PhD, you can undertake a 24 point research project, which is the entire semester spent embedded in a research group carrying out research using genomic approaches. The two other pathways share two elements of coursework, and that's a unit on disease surveillance in the microbiome. So again, this is looking at infectious disease and the application of genomics to that and microbiome analysis. There's also a unit in cancer genetics, looking at profiling and the application of genome sequencing in that area. So both of those other options contain those two units. But then in addition to that, there's an option to either do advanced case studies, which is again, emulating the workplace environment, but using a wide range of applications. So you might be looking at some cancer, some disease surveillance and some diagnostic examples. Or there's an internship option where you would be embedded in a workplace where this is ongoing. And there you would focus directly on ex whatever that workplace was involved in, depending on its setting. So hopefully I've given you a brief overview of the new masters. So we're very happy to take any questions, uh, both now and we'll be around uh, until we've finished answering all of your questions, but also via email if you think of anything later on. So thanks for your time and I'd welcome your questions.